I'm a misandrist. I'm a feminazi. I'm a communist. I have an Oedipus complex. Oh. I must be really, really, really fucking This is the life of ADF. After ADF's John McCain drawing went viral, internet users decided to compile an article on the website Encyclopedia Dramatica, based on everything they knew about ADF, similar to what they had previously done for lol cows such as Chris Chan even going as far as saying that ADF was the next Chris Chan, something they were actively searching for. These articles were intensely insulting, with the opening description being a 23-year-old unfabulous gender-bending Canadian Aspie narrowtard with a no sense of fashion whatsoever. ADF UN's leader is a tardlet who has a persecution complex to rival that of Teru Chan. Teru Chan being another lol cow they followed. These words served their purpose in insulting ADF and gaining a reaction, while trolls had their entertainment in reading about ADF's many eccentricities. After becoming aware of all her attention, ADF posted a rant video on her new YouTube channel, ADF Fuenta TV, reacting to the 4chan Encyclopedia Dramatica trolls that found her. This video is no longer available, and only a few quotes remain from that time. Neoconservatives tend to always scapegoat and blame someone else because they cannot take responsibility for their own actions and decisions. Please do not ask where I go to school at or where I live. I do not want that information out and in the hands to John McCain supporters who really want to do serious harm to me or even try to kill me. As she got more attention on YouTube, some of that attention went on to Corrine and Dusty, with users finding their DeviantArt pages and asking them to comment, questioning their friendship with ADF. Corrine on the 5th of August wrote, He is constantly muttering on about saying, basically, if you are against me in any way, you are either homophobic and or Republican. He is all 100% American, so don't let his lies fool you. He goes to the same college I go to, and he is very much not on Canadian soil. Also, he has no accent guys. If you've seen his video on YouTube about him dressed up in his attire and having an accent that is supposed to be Mexican or Scottish while he is Canadian, that is all a lie. And don't give me that. So people hate me when I came out of the closet or that ass whatever syndrome or even that communication business. They have nothing to do with this. Dusty also wrote a journal post after many trolls questioned his relationship with ADF. Yeah, I'm a horrible monster. I took someone with an obvious mental disability, and Asperger's is a disability, deal with that fact, who claimed they were having death threats made at them, and I defended him. I came to the campus on my days off to make sure he could attend his anime club meetings knowing someone was physically present who was watching out for him. So he didn't have to be scared. Mind you, I have several friends of Asperger's. ADF is the least functional of any of them, including the 12 year old I babysit sometimes. I overlooked quite a bit throughout the last eight months. I forgave him when he shit himself while visiting and I practically had to shove him into the shower because all he could do was cry hysterically and beg me not to hate him despite the fact that all I was saying was, you need to get in the shower now. I dealt with his aggressive, territorial, sexually charged tantrums around my dates. Another friend and I covered for him when he completely ignored the paperwork associated with him being the anime club president and picked up his slack so he wouldn't get in trouble with everyone. Then he started wearing bondage gear and cross-dressing at school. Remember, this is someone who is 
visibly different. I'm not entirely equipped to deal with it. Worse, my friend started accusing me of making him do this. Like I was some sort of psycho dom who was trying to get him beat up. Or worse, trying to concoct an excuse to keep being his protector. When a close straight friend asked him about the collar, it sparked a tantrum that's forever killed any chance of the two of them getting along. He plagiarised characters from the young woman named Corey he claims I turned against him. He claimed to have wild, unhabited sex with me when I wasn't even in the state at the time. Anyone who says anything about his behaviour is labelled a homophobe and dismissed, except me. I get accused of making a big deal about his Asperger's and a bunch of enabling idiots on tech internets have let him delude himself into thinking that everyone he knows in real life, and I mean everyone, are a bunch of big meanies who are hating him for no good reason, when his behaviour is completely impermissible in anyone past the age of puberty. I'm not telling him he can't overcome his Asperger's, I'm telling him he has to start doing it. Alexis, a 16 year old DeviantArt user going by the name Zabu Kawai, who followed, spoke to and made art of ADF's work even before her infamy, would also mock her in with the new crowd. He threatened to ban me if I said things about him on other sites and I lolled because OMG guys, you can't ban someone for something they do on a different site, duh her her. ADF, please don't unblock me, ever. I think me, commenting your page and getting worked up about silly little casualties has soured my character. A nice forever long break from you and your art is just what any doctor would order. So GTFO my page now. Also, this does not include me updating your ED page. That is the only aspect I'll be willing to look into, dealing with you and your fat transsexual ass. Good day. Previously, Alexis was known to have a friendly relationship with ADF, and that she would often flirt and roleplay with her over the internet. However, their friendship would fall apart after ADF believed that Alexis was the one who wrote the Encyclopedia Dramatic page, as it was proven that she had contributed to it. After this, Alexis would still fulfil ADF's art request to her, although be it in a begrudging way and insulting her in the descriptions. ADF posted a drawing mocking the many 4chan users that had been trolling her, showing them as a feces headed cartoon character, surrounded by Nazi and Republican imagery, saying, they attack and prey on anybody who is not white, male, Christian and heterosexual. These fascists will terrorise and try to silence you. 4chan trolls. They have shit for B slash reigns. ADF Uentalader will not be silenced. Along with text reading, 4chan trolls are nothing but cyber fascists. Have the Ku Klux Klan print goddamn t-shirts for you. You people sit on your fat asses who prey on people who are not white, Christian, heterosexual and has a different opinion from your twisted, fucked up right wing ideology. You are nothing but neo-Nazi thugs. These drawings and posts made trolling much worse, with the drawing also being reposted around. ADF had made herself even more of a target for these so-called trolls. After ADF posted more Corrine art, Corrine herself angrily wrote to ADF, reiterating her feelings about it. Stop drawing my characters! Have your character fall for someone else. If I see another picture with my characters anywhere in your pictures, I will do something about it. We are through. In response to all this backlash, ADF created a mega post on Y Gallery, responding to the claims from her past friends and how she now feels about the situation. Corrine has now wantonly broken up her relationship with me. I'm sorry everyone, 
Unfortunately, Corey wishes to have nothing to do with me as a friend, or let alone a human being. Also, she has made what my fans and myself believe is a ridiculous demand. She wants me to stop drawing her characters. Now, let's take the diapers off this baby before it gets any bigger of a deal. But as you do, please keep in mind the following actions she has done over the past year. Here is a little chronology over the past six months. 10th of June 2008, after two month hiatus from DA, I simply raised a very simple that anybody could ask her. If you expand effort to post someone else's OC character, why don't the same effort be expanded with her own? I put that question to a petition for the viewers and fans to decide. A simple exercise in democracy that exploded into a fight. 19th of August 2008, Corrine defends the racist actions of the trolls from ED and 4chan. 9th of September 2008, in an apparent defense of an art critic that violated my copyright, she naively asked if I am doing drugs, whereas I was protecting work that was of my own creation. This particular work was clearly marked Critique Discouraged. Also, there was a disclaimer that clearly forbids any alteration of that particular piece. Do not steal, edit, copy, colour over or redistribute, ever. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen this disclaimer in the description boxes on my submissions as of late. I am simply enforcing a rule I had laid down here. If anybody steals and alters my art, you will pay the consequences. Simple as that. Yet the discussion degenerated into a debate about copyrights and her characters. You are calling the kettle black, Philippe. Look at your work and tell me about copyright infringement. Also people, keep in mind that virtually three years, Corrine had raised no such demands for me to stop drawing her characters. Not in 2005, not in 2006, not in 2007, no. She waits until the seventh anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, and then she makes this demand for me to stop drawing her characters. What a shameless act of timing, using the anniversary of an American tragedy that killed 3,000 people to express her demand and to guilt trip me into complying with such a demand. Any person who views these three years until she finally lodges any meaningful, cohesive demand for me to stop drawing her characters should really see such as outrageous. If Corrine does decide to follow through on a copyright lawsuit, this three year discrepancy until she complains is going to prove to be a very big hole in her story. Also, there is plenty of citable evidence in journals and comments that can be interpreted to her, past and present. I understand that I regularly use Corrine's characters for Kochan High School. Uh, hence the reason it's named after her character, DDD. I copyright her character to her, the creator of Corrine Narumi. The artwork is also copyrighted to me because I'm the one who bursts these stones, drawing them hours at a time. I add her name to the artwork, so not have her exclude in any way. If anything, she rightfully deserves that done for her. Also, I really cast doubt she'll follow through with legal action on me. Considering the level of hospitality for this recent comments. Who said anything about your courts, asshole? I'm sick of you being a bitch to other people. Stop living in your world and face reality. The Koshan High School I've created is something called a doujinshi. Fan comics. I am a big fanboy of her characters. I know I don't draw it the way Corey draws it. Again, that's something make us different. We are different. Corrine and I usually have our interests, kinks and disagreements. I admit to being more of a yaoi fanboy. And she is a fangirl. She is heterosexual, to my knowledge, and I am homosexual. I accept that as a fait accompli. Also, we have different work ethics when it comes to art. I always colour in everything I draw. I'm usually done a piece, a reasonable and logical amount of time. I make sure I do not get distracted from completing an art piece. Now, do not misconstrue this. Oh, ADF Fuenza leader is bragging that he's better than Corrine. Not true. Even if the artwork has flaws in it, I keep on working and trying to get better. Corrine might no longer want ties with me, 
From past journals, I have continued to hold out hope for our relationship to improve and go back to a level of normalcy. But Corinne has refused to talk to me in person, to work to solve our problems, resorting to nothing more than culvating lols on the interwebs. A cheap replacement to good old fashioned, meaningful and qualitative face to face dialogue. Negotiation is not her strong suit I guess. Lulls? Interwebs? These words, I admit, are very foreign to me. I'm sorry, I SPEAK ENGLISH ON THE DAMN INTERNET! Not this corrupted dialect of internet these people pass off as English. Guys and girls, I don't know. I've done everything I could to renew our relationship. Every heartfelt effort meet with dismissal. I do not think I want to keep trying any more with her. She's the one who gave up on me first by not wanting to talk to me, by siding with people who will hold ill will towards me, by condoning the recent trolling, death threats, hate spam and turning a blind eye to bullying based on my sexual orientation. Before Corinne's request is at all entertained with her characters to be answered, can I still call her a friend? Have I done enough to bring her back? Corinne, sad to say, I no longer consider my friend. Our breakup was not my fault. She clearly did more to distance herself, and she has done such a coddly, effective job. She succeeded to that effect, breaking away from me. She has won that battle, but there is something Corinne will never achieve if she continues to dispose of her best friends for personal gain and glory. Peace. Dusty responded to this post, saying, It's called changing her mind or legally, a cease and desist request. Leave her the hell alone. I'm sick of the phone calls from her in tears because you're a self-absorbed ass who doesn't care about anyone's feelings but his own. Corey doesn't talk to you in person anymore because you never listen and you never respect her feelings. I suppose something good will come out of this though as you can no longer post pictures of your fantasies of me slash Kness. You claim to be a gay man but you dress as a woman and want to be called Felicia or Corrine, which is just creepy. That's transgenderism, which is completely different. Which brings up another excellent point. If I wanted to date a woman named Felicia, I'd be straight. As expected, ADF continued to draw Corrine, even making one of Corrine's characters breed with one of hers. Corinne is now a grandmother! How so, you ask? Her character, Canis, and my character, Akihito, has a child now between the two. His name is Ariel Sagara. He looks a lot like Akihito, the mother, but has Canis' eyes and hair colour, the daddy. ADF allegedly got tested for AIDS, fearing getting the virus. She talked about how she recently broke up with an ex-boyfriend and that that ex had cheated on her. There is little evidence to say if ADF had any kind of relationship, or whether all of this was more of the fantasy referring to Dusty. Three months after the picture had been spread around, many people had reported ADF's John McCain drawing as a threat of political violence, and even attracted federal agents to investigate the matter, gaining the attention of the college itself informing them it was drawn on school property. It was clear that this was an issue for both ADF herself and the college. So it is said that because of this, she was expelled. The place where she would do most of her socialising, activity and art, she could no longer attend. Because of events like this, she began to grow paranoid about her own infamy, leading her to change her IP to Canada, a place she previously claimed to be from. And sometime after this, ADF and her mother had left New Jersey to move to Philadelphia in a new house. To her followers, ADF gave a very different reason for her departure from college, claiming that she was simply having stress-related health issues and feared having a heart attack, something that was common in her family. She felt that she could no longer attend school safely and that leaving was her own choice. In November 2008, California State held an election to put forward Proposition 8, a constitution amendment intended to ban same-sex marriage. ADF reacted to this enraged. Free California! California is definitely asking for trouble. 
First off, before I really get into Prop 8 over in California, I want to apologise to anyone about my last comment saying that yes, the US is still one backwards ass Christian country when it comes to gay rights. Still behind Canada. Still behind Europe. I do apologise for that, but there is a big part of me that says I shouldn't feel sorry about this comment. She then compares Proposition 8 to South African apartheid and its oppression over a minority group. Sooner or later, those people will have the intelligentsia to stop protesting and start shootings and bombings of that apartheid regime and the people who benefit from such a government. Now, I personally do not condone terrorism, but I have the common sense to understand how it can be justified. If the California GLBT community is smart enough, if they want to end the injustice done to them by the evangelical Christians who voted for Proposition 8, they, the GLBT community of California, will start learning how to start a series of riots, use guns and build bombs, and before long, they will start shooting Prop 8 supporters, white or black. Those gays may even be bold enough to blow up public transport buses one day too or even suicide bomb the churches they backed Prop 8. Right now, the supporters of Prop 8 are only complaining right now about vandalism, rock throwings, and some fistfights on the streets. That will be nothing compared to what may be in store for California. The gay community rises up and take matters into their own hands, even if it kills innocent people in the process. For those who live in California, I again emphasize, I do not condone violence or terrorism. I am simply saying, if California denies gays their rights to marry and more, be prepared for this group you are denying rights to to start fighting back. In short, do unto others you want done to you. Free Yowie-fornia. These violent beliefs of ADF were referred to as gay nationalism. As her beliefs and actions began to attract more criticism, she asked her followers how they really feel about her. Something been bothering me a lot lately. It has just been eating me apart for the last week or more. Do I in any way creep you guys out or violate you in any way? And I am talking in terms of my sexuality. Whatever I do too that you find bothersome of me. I really need some help getting some self-control for myself in that area. And I am in need of meaningful solutions for this. I am turning into something scary with this yaoi thing I do in life and on here. Please let your voice be heard to me. Tell me what is wrong with me and be open towards solutions to the problems I am causing or what I am lacking. On Christmas she posts another update after a long spout with no internet at home. 2008 is slowly changing over to 2009. 2008 was a pretty iffy to bad year for me. I want to give a big thanks to all of you for friendship, support, help, suggestions, collab and inspiration this year. And above all, for a couple of you sticking up for me when my ex-boyfriend decided to make issue with my mental health and whether or not I'm a legitimate partner in his relationship. I am not standing for that verbal, slash mental abuse in a relationship like that. No, sorry, ain't happening. I was abused for 16 years of my life at the hands of my father. The minute someone says something dumb like that, I'm done with him. Man, do I want to forget that day this year the most. BTW? He also went as far as to post a whole flame journal about it. Which is, if I am not concerned, a violation of the TOS under section 7A. It is still there on his profile here, last I checked. Yeah, enough about that, moving on. And of course, I need a break from school and start making money again. Next year I have a few plans. As I told you, I now have internet at home. Yay, cosplaying, something I plan to do a lot of in 2009. She then lists all the characters she plans on cosplaying. All these being Naruto characters, with her saying she wouldn't mind wearing a skirt and boots when referring to Sakura. She also posted a bondage safety journal giving advice on what to do in BDSM scenarios. It was clear that from this point on, cosplay was what was on ADF's agenda. Cosplaying Sasuke was ADF's dream and doing this persuaded her to lose weight and be closer to the character's healthier body. 
She weighed herself at 212 pounds, her initial goal being to lose 45. The method in which she wanted to lose weight was a diet that she called the Sarske diet. This was described as follows. No more eggs, no more pork, no more red beef, no more fast food products, period. She had planned to gradually convert to a mostly vegetarian or borderline vegan diet, eating more seafood, poultry, ramen, fruits and vegetables. This was part of a self-improvement push. After everything that had gone wrong prior in her life, she decided she wanted to be someone better and embody a character she had always looked up to. After many attempts of trying to report ADF's repeated art theft, Corrine had had enough. She sent a troll attack on her Let's Play forum to spam this message. You will get what is coming to you. Karma will kick in and bite you in the ass so hard, you don't even know what will hit you. Also, I'm tired of hearing about your fucking syndrome shit and your fucking gay pride. We know you are here and queer and you have that Asperger's things. ADF responded with a post saying, I have had it with Corrine's motherfucking trolls on my motherfucking website. Everybody, strap in. I'm about to open some fucking windows. Cock's gun. Is now ordering trolls lurking on Y Gallery to report all my existing Akihito and Canis artworks on my Y Gallery account. Regardless of dates of creation or submission, please, everyone, report Corrine for continued ongoing harassment and trolling to the DA and Y Gallery staff. She claims Corrine was on the side of the non assholes committee, but she agrees to give up drawing most of Corrine's characters. Be prepared for a mass relocation of the Sagara family to Y Gallery, for they are now refugees from my DA account. Akihito and Canis are no longer allowed to live there on DA, simply because their children aren't safe here anymore. I am moving them to some place where they can live in happiness together and move away from persecution, simple as that. I am willing to give up drawing all of Corrine's characters, except Canis, because Canis and Akihito now have a family together and that too they love each other. I am not splitting this family up because of Corrine. The Sagara family will stay together. She personifies her characters, thinking of their emotions as if they really had them. Corrine responded with a long rant to defend herself from homophobia accusations and explaining the art theft ADF had done. It is also unfair of him saying you hate me because I'm gay deal. That is totally not true. I have a few friends that are gay and they are the best people around. We talk, laugh and enjoy each other's company. He on the other hand puts that to shame by flaunting his gayness everywhere, making really annoying, we know he is gay, he needs to get over it. I don't know why you are calling a yaoi fangirl a homophobe, since I made Vid and Haoshi a gay couple. You have no right to take MY characters that I put blood, sweat and tears into during those 10 years. Since we're on the topic, you ONLY know them of their looks, don't you? You don't know anything about their history, story or personality. You only know them of their looks. I don't know about you, but you could care less about my characters. You only care about their looks. And just like dating, it doesn't go well. You don't care to bother knowing the story behind the characters that I've created. You only use them for your own personal gain. I don't know about you, but that is wrong, either in the artist world and in real life, when you are focused on looks and not personality. Also, who are you to make demands when you are at fault? So to clarify, no, I do not agree to this. You are not to draw ANY of my characters again. And I am tired of being in tears and complaining about this to many people because of your false accusations and destroying of my characters. She also describes her own history with being bullied and how it does not excuse ADF's behaviour, ending with the quote, I will start to stand up and hope that the victims of this man will come forth 
and fight alongside me in the hopes of getting those pictures removed and that he apologises for his actions. And we have news. There will be young children in the White House for the first time since the Kennedy generation. Barack Obama, in our view, President-elect of the United States of America. After Obama won the presidential election, ADF posted a photo celebrating the Republicans' defeat, but reminiscing about the consequences of the Iraq War. During this time, she would describe herself as an agnostic atheist. She also advocates for gay men to own a gun, writing a post reading. Imagine you're at home with your boyfriend slash girlfriend and somebody breaks in. Well, kind of like in this possible scenario. We're here to take away your rights. We'll take these. Thank <laughs> she you. references a satirical short film by Courage California. Scary, isn't it? But people, bear in mind that most home invasions are usually armed. Those invaders didn't have guns to begin with. And the entire incident could have been thwarted had those women owned a firearm. If I were in that video, when home invader B says, Who's going to stop us? <laughs> this is where I'd get my handgun and open fire on them. Now you're thinking, Aki-chan, you are advocating violence against straight people. You are a heterophobe. Oh geez. United States has done such a great job with gay rights. I mean, just look at Proposition 8 in California. We are really making progress here in America. Uh, what we ban next? Bullshit. Yeah, Though it's gotten very little attention in the gay press, the Supreme Court struck down the DC firearms ban in 2008. The handgun ban in the District of Columbia was found unconstitutional because the law is especially harmful to gay Americans. She then goes on to support the Pink Pistols, an organisation advocating for gun rights of LGBT individuals. Although ADF didn't own a gun herself, she states that she strongly considers getting one, and that gun rights are gay rights. After regular online contact, ADF met up with a cosplay group called Shrimpy Ninja Otaku Productions, or SNOP for short joining as an official member. Oh, you're half naked. The other members in the group were mostly girls aged 14 to 16. ADF was known to be touchy and overly familiar with the girls. And eating all of her yes, she's all right, really shy. She doesn't want to say anything. No, not that one. That one. Yeah, yeah, next to Itachi. This raised many concerns from people about her position as an adult figure in a group with minors. By April 17th, ADF had already lost £45. Happy with her success, she began to order elements of her cosplay, ready to become her hero Sasuke. ADF's mother paid $600 for the cosplay items, under the pretense that ADF would pay her back in instalments. Around this time, ADF's YouTube channel was suspended, leading her to create a new YouTube channel called ADF Sasuke Evolution. ADF later posts concerns on her Y gallery about having an inferiority complex comparing herself to Sasuke. I really believe that I'm rather obsessed with Sasuke Ujaha, but unfortunately it made me to the point I actually want to BECOME Sasuke Ujaha. That is the part that is getting some people all upset with me. If I am trying to become Sasuke Uchiha, I guess I really must be mentally fragile, to the point I may have an inferiority complex. This feeling may be manifested in withdrawal from social contacts, or excessive seeking for attention, criticism of others, overly dutiful obedience, fear and worry. Now I must ask you all, does this sound a lot like what I've been doing and going through? I am not stating I regret in any way achieving this Sasuke cosplay goal. I am however worried how I did get there, and, and how I am seeking everyone's praise, attention and approval for this goal. If all my boasting and updates leading up this annoyed you in any way, I apologise. I believe some of that was natural excitement coming through me, and that it is hard for anyone to keep to themselves. I know a lot of you do look up to me and all. I ask you to show concern for me, and please do not what I did in the same exact fashion to get a goal like this. BE YOURSELF! And lastly, please do not say, Ah, oh, ADF, 
don't worry about it, you were just really obsessed over Sasuke and really driven to succeed and really excited. Don't say something like that. You're okay. It is all okay for you to look up to me. But I ask, at what cost is that coming at for me? Perhaps I could be losing my identity. I might be so unhappy with what I look like in real life. I urge you, please be yourself. But it is hard for me to do it, especially someone who has been bullied and harassed relentlessly in the past. It seems because of the hatred she had experienced herself, she was moving herself into a new identity, losing who she really is, and becoming the anime character who was once nothing more than entertainment. On May 25th, ADF resigned from the cosplay group SNOP due to legal disagreements with member Sheena and accusations of paedophilia that came with ADF's association with the group. I decided it would be in my best interests for me, for me to leave my cosplay group, Shrimpy Ninja Otaku Pro. I am sorry everyone, I am really upset right now. I am hurting again. I didn't want to leave, but it is for my greater good and well-being. God forbid I sharing in a snop member, am I right? Actually, I decided to leave become I do not wish to continue being treated like I am some sort of criminal paedophile in the eyes of my cosplay group. I will simply not bear to wait an agonisingly long time for them to open up and trust me. The members of SNOP are simply out of my league with regard to the level of maturity I had unrealistic expectations for. My addition to SNOP would have greatly upset the demographics of SNOP. I would unfairly end up dominating the entire group for the cosplay attention the group would want and it would have been a matter of time till jealousy and infighting would cause the group to break up. Plus, the longer I stay with the group and get more deeply involved, the more I will get unfairly labelled a paedophile, whether it be from SNOP members, DA watchers, parents and whatnot. Staying with SNOP would have been externally and internally destructive to my image. I deleted two last journal I posted because I personally could not stand to receive another comment implying I was some kind of paedophile. Gay does not equal paedophile. For the last time, I will say that. I'll be way better off right now cosplaying solo. And then, when I find a loving boyfriend, I'll hope to involve him in cosplay, when that will happen. I have been unhappy with Snop and Sheena in the last couple of weeks, largely due to their slow movements in trusting me. I was frustrated with it all, especially when I was misrepresented as the group's legal guardian so who could sign a contract and photographic release for them in botched negotiations with someone who could have been the cosplay's group photographer. This is an example of how Sheena used my age as leverage to negotiate a contract. ADF is 23 and he would be the one signing it, not me. I'm sorry you feel so strongly about this, but I find it hard to trust anyone who I know nothing about. That would be illegal, Sheena, trying to pass me off as the legal guardian. And one more thing. Pro tip, minors cannot sign photographic releases and minors cannot enter binding contracts. If it were not for the shady manoeuvring with those negotiations, she went as so far as to put her nose in the personal business and lifestyle of the photographer candidate. She even hit the guy up for a date. It is against the law in a majority of states to ask that for a paying job interview. Business ethics fail. So I guess I fucked up trying to join Shrimpy Ninja Otaku Productions. They are blinded by having someone as cool as me on their group. And when the shit hits the fan and Sheena screws up, it is taken one way or another against me. That's why I hate blind sheep as fans here on DeviantArts. Look at where it got me. Problems and aggravation and unnecessary stress. After all this drama, yet another one of ADF's friendship groups has now fallen apart and moved on without her. So, bye. Say goodbye, Hinata. Bye-bye. And bye, Shorty. Bye-bye. <laughs> 22nd of May, California State upheld Proposition 8. ADF responded to this in rage. I will burn the American flag today. I just learned that the California Supreme Court upheld 
Prop 8 today. Nice going, you homophobic Americans. I will be burning the American flag that is on my front lawn today. That is all for now. I am so fucking ashamed of being an American citizen. She continues posting to her followers and encourages a boycott of companies that support Prop 8. It is clear she was strongly affected by what these politics mean for her as a gay person. On this day, she also introduces her new deviant art, Chidori Tickles, with a post reading. I decided to create a joint Sasu Naru slash Sasu cosplay account with whoever will be my future boyfriend. A boyfriend who is like Naruto Uzumaki, one that can quickly trust me, love me, and has a use it or lose it attitude towards life. That's the kind of cosplay mate and boyfriend I want. She refers to this partner as Adobe, a word Sasuke uses to insult Naruto in the show. Adobe. <laughs> Jidori Tickles will be the home of cosplay pics me and my future boyfriend when we cosplay together and do Sasu Naru slash Naru Sasu stuff together. I don't know how long it will be until I find a Naruto, but I will find a Dobe. I won't give up looking. I am lonely and in need of a Dobe. A man that cosplays Naruto was ADS biggest desire in a lover, joining her in her Sasuke fantasy and cosplay series she plans. Hoping to attract this hypothetical partner, she attended Philadelphia Gay Pride. It is that time of year again! Sasuke Teme, ADF, will be at the Philly Pride Day Parade slash Festival 2009! I went last year, it was great. Too bad my ex-boyfriend, Orochimaru, didn't go with me. Well, I am single this time, and will be cosplaying none other than Sasuke Uchiha at the Gay Pride Festival. And hopefully, I will find a nice, hot Naruto Uzumaki to meet and have as my boyfriend. I'm really excited to go this year, probably because I'm single and looking. Who's going to be there and bump into Sasuke Teme? She later attends her first gay bar and started drinking for the first time. Before this, she had been put off the idea, saying, my alcoholic father ruined alcohol for me and my attitude towards it. However, the appeal of gay bars and the prospect of a romantic company changed her perspective on the matter. Her drink of choice was now Smirnoff Ice. While she did not meet anyone here romantically like she had hoped, she enjoyed her first experience and it would become a regular occurrence for her. Jacqueline questioned the way she would proposition men in her search for a romantic partner because of ADF's Asperger's. ADF was angered by her mother's concerns and thus started a divide between them. The very nature of the Dobe search has taken on a rather urgent nature. There is now an emergency need for future residency with a Dobe. This is not going to happen next week, next month, or a couple of months from now. This is more likely to occur in 2010, possibly in summer or fall 2010. I may have to move out from my mother's place. Why you ask? I have a couple of reasons. One, my mother is violating the terms of my coming out letter of 25th of March 2008. For some of you watched me back then, this was a big issue. I was on war footing if she did not accept me then. She is violating this by discouraging me into not finding a guy. This is a violation of my civil rights, simple as that. And fuck her motherly concerns about my safety. She's getting way too overprotective. I'm almost 24 years old and can handle myself pretty well on the streets of Philadelphia. And much better than herself too, in certain respects. My mother is also in violation of the terms of the same above coming out letter of 25th of March 2008 by making assumptions that I'm not capable of certain things or abilities due to the fact that I have Asperger's syndrome. This also ties in with reason one to an extent by encountering two violations as two violations. This is going to cause serious clashes and fighting. If it has not already in certain episodes in the past I have had with her, it will definitely worsen in the future. Things are okay and stable for right now but it will deteriorate as time passes into the future. To put it a little more simply, my future depends on finding that dobe. I have at least a year to do so, or I risk being in an abusive, exploitative, and potentially oppressive situation if I continue to live with my mother. After she kept trying in her dobe search, she eventually considered her Naruto love quest over after meeting a man named John a freelance photographer in the Philadelphia area who specialised in gay subject matter. 
They met when John offered to take some photos of ADF and started a connection between them. ADF would refer to John as her new boyfriend, but as with Dusty and Corrine, there is a chance they are really just friends. On the 17th of August, ADF claimed that she was almost attacked whilst coming home from work. She described the offenders as a couple of 20-something year old African-American males and that they called me a faggot and threw a couple of rocks at me. Contemplating the incident, she wrote, What is it with blacks and homophobia? 45 to 50 years ago, they had a civil rights battle. What the fuck? After this, she wanted to get a job transfer to a different, safer, Wawa location. And to make herself feel better, with the assistance of Alexis, she drew herself winning the fight. She also updates her country, Australatina, adding more lore about its creation and conflict. Drawing San Felipe, the Yowie district, an LGBT neighbourhood similar to the gayborhood in Philadelphia. ADF's relationship with her mother began to deteriorate even more, with ADF claiming that she threatened something drastic in order to get more cosplay items, saying, Maybe next time I'll threaten World War 3 without nukes when I crossplay Sakura Haruno. On the 18th of October, ADF wrote, I'm sorry, Kanaha! I never meant to hurt you! I never meant to make Naruto cry! But tonight, I'm cleaning out my closet. Hmm. Happy birthday, Eminem, aka Marshall Mathers III. She also posted this message. Naruto, you just forced me to confess our bonds. Do not give up. I believe in you, though I will not admit you otherwise, Dobei. I know you love me as much as you love Sai. And Sakura, you wouldn't give up on Sasuke now, wouldn't you? I know times are tough, believe me. 30 plus days with the job transfer, still waiting on that fucking transfer. I am barely making anything. That will change soon, I hope. Stay strong. For Sakura, for Sai and Sasuke. Don't give up on Sasuke. You have given me so much. I love and care about you. The context behind these strange messages are unknown, but they were presumably aimed at John and relationship troubles ADF was experiencing through the lens of Naruto. On the 21st of October, her job transfer went through. She moved to a venue closer to a police station, which she describes as an epic security win. Alexis posted a poll on DeviantArt asking people what they think of Encyclopedia Dramatica. ADF responded, ED to ADF Fuenza leader is what Arab countries are to Israel. Pointless and blind hatred. Plus, if they continue to attack me post Corrine and go after me about cosplay, then it's really pointless and it only serves to validate my position I held about cosplaying. Say no to cosplay racists and elitists. ED is a security threat that has to be regularly monitored. Two months ago, they did try to hack my DA accounts. And not to mention, certain security measures and policies are already in place because of ED. Online set to invisible, hate slash racial slash anti-LGBT commentary will be flagged. Historically, when Corrine starts her shit, ED starts their shit on me. There is a correlation with her timeline versus increased periods of edits. If you don't believe me, I will illustrate it. On the other hand, ED ultimately brought Corrine down, and I, ADF, is still here. Fuck, I even have a personal list of favourite articles on ED, and I do take personal joy on beating on Tarot Shits, Venom Fang X, and Christian slash CWC. And I do read the meme articles. This spirals into an argument between the two in the comments. ADF attended ZenkaiCon, cosplaying as Sasuke, filming videos and meeting other like-minded individuals. These cosplays and convention spending habits grew more and more expensive and put more and more strain on ADF's relationship with her mother, leading to a point where ADF crossed the line and went way too far. 
ADF had kept spending money on cosplay items of different characters, her main desire being to cosplay Sakura. This outfit was really important to her. However, her mother refused to buy any items from it, as she was upset at ADF's spending habits, having gained little money from her in return. She suggested maybe ADF could contribute to household expenses with her own earnings and maybe start paying rents. This led to a large argument between the two, which just got worse and worse, to the point where ADF punched her own mother. She later posted about this, saying, Urgent fighting between myself and my mother. Please know slash PM me for details if you are concerned what is going on with me. I do not wish to discuss the causes and history of events leading up to this fight publicly on this journal and it is very likely there will be more fighting between me and my mother in the coming days and weeks. The result will be homelessness or jail for me if the situation enter a period longer than two to three weeks. All my drawing and cosplay plans are largely on hold at the moment due to the violence. Please, I need your help and support but I can't discuss publicly. For those who have not figured it out already, I threw the first punch. Punching her disabled mother was a shock to both ADF's followers and trolls, questioning why she would do such a thing to her own mother. Trolls nicknamed this the Mother Puncher, and apparently further fighting between the two occurred in the next few days. On her blog, she explained her need to cosplay Sakura and why it was so important to her. Just because I need the escape of being the opposite gender, it's more than cosplay to me. At this point, pretty much since high school, I have desired to know what it would look like slash feel like as a female. And shortly after this, for the first time ever, ADF declares that she is transgender. It was clear that a transition was on its way, putting her controversial past behind her. Philip Haskins Delici was no more. She was now a Hoovia Haral.